Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be talking about Enneagram 6s in love. If you're an Enneagram 6 and want to understand yourself and how you relate to others, keep watching. Or if you're dating or married to a 6, this video also will help you to learn how to relate to your beloved 6 so much better. And watch till the end because I'm going to be sharing three tips on how to love your 6 well. Hi, I'm Tyler Zock, pastor, Enneagram coach, author of the 40 Day Gospel for Enneagram devotional series, and your personal guide to helping you transform your life, relationships, and workplace by giving you spot on truths for your type. So keep watching if you want to feel seen, understood, and challenged to let go of the things that are keeping you stuck in your personal and professional life. And make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on more free content coming up next week. Now, let's get to it. Sixes are dependable, committed, and fiercely loyal. I know because I'm married to one. Uh, sixes are hardworking and responsible, and that leads them to take on most of the practical tasks in a marriage or partnership. Uh, sixes seek a partner who can help quiet their self-questioning. Right, One of the characteristics of a six is that they uh, have self-doubt. And they ask a lot of questions and they need somebody who is not going to stir up more anxiety, but help quiet and, and bring reassurance to their self-questioning. Uh, sixes need someone who is calm where they are anxious and bold where they are fearful. Sometimes the partner of a six can think that they are a pessimist when they really know that they're a realist. Okay. Uh, sixes ask a lot of questions, uh, they explore every angle, and that's just being realistic. Uh, but it could come off as being pessimis pessimistic to their loved one. At times, sixes will second guess the relationship. While other people may be like, I'm fully in, I'm in love, you know, I just want to be with you. Sixes are sometimes like, well, maybe, <laughs> okay? Uh, but watch this, just because they express doubts doesn't mean they're not fully committed. Right? They ask questions and they doubt to get the, to that place of certainty for the relationship. Uh, sixes need someone who will listen to their doubts and their concerns without judgment. Right? That is something that if you're married to a six, man, create space for them. Listen to their doubts and concerns without any judgment. Right? They need that time to process with you. They need a safe place uh, to process. Sixes can be romantic but they prefer reality over anything that feels fake or artificial. Okay, so sixes might not seem romantic at times, but it's just because they prefer uh, what's real, right? what's tangible, what's concrete. Uh, and so in romantic relationships, deep friendship is the highest priority. Not necessarily all the lovey-dovey uh, stuff and the flowers, all that stuff is a bonus, but what they really, really desire in a relationship uh, is not to get caught up in the fake art and artificial romance uh, that is on TV or rom-coms, right? But they really value deep friendship. It's a high priority. This next one is, is something that I have felt from my wife, and that is that sixes love their partners for who they really are, not their public persona, okay? Sixes do not get enthralled with... Uh, your image, uh, who you are on Instagram, like the, the popular side of who you are. No, they, they aren't interested in that because that's fake, right? They, they love you for who you are behind the mask. And that is something that I've deeply cherished for my wife is knowing that she loves me for me and not for my successful crafted image or self. And uh, so I really love Sixes for that. And by the way, I want to say that as we go along here, if there's anything that's really resonating with you, please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear what you agree with or maybe what you disagree with. Okay, uh, so moving on. Uh, sixes quickly identify problem areas of the relationship and then bring them up for discussion. Okay? Where some people will sweep problems under the rug, uh, you know, are, are, there might be some types that are afraid of conflict. Uh, sixes don't love conflict, but they feel like if they're problem areas, they need to talk about them. They need to discuss them and will oftentimes bring them up first in the relationship. Okay. Again, it doesn't mean that they're not committed. It means they are committed. That's why they're asking the questions to work and resolve it, to get to a place of peace in the relationship, a place where they can trust you. Okay. 
Uh, sometimes sixes read things into the relationship that aren't there. Okay, this is when they're unhealthy or really stressed, uh, they begin to become suspicious and they might read things into the relationship that aren't there. And so sixes are going to have to test their own doubts and test their own suspicions to see if there's any concrete evidence for those suspicions. Uh, one of the things that comes up a lot is that sixes are fearful that their partner is going to abandon them or leave them. Uh, sixes, again, are wolf pack uh, creatures. They love belonging and being a part of a wolf pack, and they love being in a relationship, right? It's a, it's a team. And so they, when they're unhealthy, will start to doubt and become suspicious that the other person is going to abandon them, which might lead to them being overprotective at times. Also, when unhealthy, sixes may stay in toxic relationships because they feel safe and predictable. Okay, sixes really don't miss this is that you can stay in toxic relationships um, that aren't healthy for you that aren't good for you if if you feel more safe and it feels safe and more predictable uh, it might lead you to, to not take the courage to walk away from the other person uh, because sometimes fear of the unknown right trumps uh, fear of staying with the relationship for a six they would rather hear a painful truth than a lie, okay? So if you're in a relationship with the six, just give them the honest truth because if you lie to them or are caught in a lie, it's gonna be really hard to rebuild trust uh, with the six. Uh, sixes need to feel safe and connected to you before they can be physically intimate. Well, some types, it's the reverse. Well, they can get physically intimate right away, but for sixes, they need to feel safe and they need to feel emotionally connected before uh, they can become physically intimate. Uh, physical touch can actually help calm their tendency to overthink. And so when the wheels are spinning, sometimes a back rub or just being physically affectionate can help calm a six down. Uh, sixes are loyal allies, and I love this, that your enemies are their enemies. I have experienced this for my wife. She is a fierce and loyal protector. And so when, especially being in ministry, when there's all kinds of craziness that happens, like Lindsay's like, your enemies are my enemies, right? She is a devout and loyal, and I love that about her. In conflict, sixes may either fearfully withdraw or become highly reactive. Okay, there are phobic sixes that tend to flee uh, from conflict, and there are counterphobic sixes that go against their fear and actually pursue their enemies <laughs> or pursue the person uh, they're having conflict with and come off very strong, right? It's either flight or fight. It's hard for a six to be in the middle. And so that's, that's one of the things as a six you're going to have to work on is figuring out uh, which of those temptations you have and then try to avoid fleeing and staying in it. Uh, um, no matter how scary it sounds, uh, or uh, you're going to have to resist reacting and uh, saying words you, you're going to regret later and, and fighting and, and, and trying to ask questions before you come at people with suspicions or accusations. All right. Once sixes finally trust someone, they begin to soften up, become warm, fun, witty, and undemanding. Uh, I love that about sixes, that they don't trust someone right away. Like, and this was hard for me because when I was trying to charm Lindsay and, uh, you know, do my thing to win her over, she wasn't that impressed, right? As a three, I was like, come on, I'm, you know, I'm trying to charm you here. And she wasn't that impressed uh, because she's like, well, we'll see. And, uh, but once I was able to gain her trust, uh, she just relaxed more. She became warm. She's super witty and funny. I love that about her. And uh, the relationship just continued to take off after that trust was there. And that's just something I love about sixes. They're, they have good people discernment and you can't woo them you know, easily. But once you do, uh, there's just a warm, deep and safe relationship that's built. Uh, and lastly, uh, sixes prioritize their loved ones above their career in church. Okay. As a three, I have tended to idolize work. Uh, I've given myself to campus ministry and then pastoral ministry. And it's so easy to get caught up in those things. Um, but for Lindsay, family has always trumped uh, career. 
and I love that about sixes. They tend to be just amazing parents, amazing spouses. They are loyal, and they will not neglect or put their family on the altar of ministry or career uh, because they are devoted to their family, and I love that about you sixes. All right, at the beginning, I said I'd share three tips on how we can love our top six as well, and here they are. One, give them space to express their doubts or concerns. Right? Don't call them a pessimist, like we talked earlier, or make them feel like they don't have faith in the relationship. Right? Give them space to express their doubts and concerns. It's like a, a love language of, of you listening uh, to them. And remember, it's, it's for the purpose of building a deeper relationship and testing the relationship so they can get stronger. Okay? Uh, second, reassure them when they are stressed out. Like when they're catastrophizing and it feels like the sun and the moon and the stars are falling and they're like, everything is going wrong. Don't try to make them feel bad about that. Uh, don't try to argue with them. Just reassure them. Okay. Oftentimes they're not looking to win an argument, but they're just releasing their fear. They're releasing their anxiety out loud. They're getting it out and they need to, they need to hear from you. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Trust me. And they need just that, that constant reassurance. And then third, deliver on your promises. If you say you are going to do something, then do it. Remember, they are super loyal and devoted. So don't be flaky. Don't be inconsistent with your words or actions. Right? Build trust by showing your love daily, showing your love consistently with your actions. Okay, that's all I have for today. If you want to learn more, know that I've written a devotional for type sixes with scripture, powerful truths for your type, three reflection questions at the end of each day, a daily prayer and action step, uh, lots of great stuff there. So go check out the book link below in the description. I'd love for you to keep learning and growing by grabbing a copy of that book. And if you love the content today on this video, make sure to hit the like button to tell YouTube to share it with more people. And now don't leave because you can stick around to learn about how other Enneagram types are in love right here and check out the playlist with over 90 minutes of teaching on all the Enneagram types right here. And I'll see you in the next video.